Gary McKay, production designer for Cowboy Bebop. Uh, this is a live action adaptation of the anime series. And so had you watched the anime before joining the show? Uh, I Yeah, I had. I'd been a, a, like not an Uber fan. There's some serious Uber fans out there that um, obviously, but I was aware of the show. I'd watched the show uh, and then a, a long time ago. And uh, it was like a lovely reintroduction to, to get the opportunity to, to come and work on it. It was a um, pretty exciting and pretty mind-blowing opportunity, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're adapting like a, a beloved, like hallowed IP like this, like how do you balance, you know, being faithful to the original while doing your own thing? Uh, I mean, uh, I guess all of our departments, you know, in costume design, production design, all of us had that and the, obviously the writers and producers and directors had that to deal with as well. And um, I think because we, you know, most of us were such huge fans of the original anyway, that uh, we felt like a real obligation to, uh, to do as well as we could for the existing fans. So whether it was, you know, we didn't change, you know, we, we uh, used things like the Swordfish Spikes iconic uh, spaceship, his zip craft, and you know we didn't divert very far from it, apart from to perhaps make it function, look like it functions in a real way, and figure out how to do that. But they're such beautiful designs anyway. Um, it, it was the perfect kicking off point. We were lucky enough to get a, sort of a lovely uh, series of sort of 600 sketches from the original designers like not colored sketches just loose obviously when they were doing all their thinking and working um was uh kimitoshi yamane the original mechanical designer so we had sort of 600 drawings uh from the original designer uh that we could mine through and look for and tr understand and uh, that was just exciting that was just to have that um to have that base of beautiful design already is really a dream. So I guess all we did were, well, all we did, what we tried to do was be faithful to that, like for the Bebop itself as well. Uh, obviously, uh, the, you know, um, we tried to make, there's aspects of that when you see the inside of the, the Bebop spaceship, jet spaceship, you'll see the handrails are sort of in the feel of the original sketch. And there's even big hatches and doorways that are in the feel of the original anime. But we definitely made, feel, made it feel uh, more lived in, obviously, uh, a lot more broken and sort of run down to give it that sort of bachelor pad style. Uh, and then we got to put all the characters backstory with our lovely set decorator, Annika Borta, to put in the uh, Jets stereo, his jazz collection, um, you know, spikes, um, uh, training equipment, all that stuff that collects up in the, in the ship. So I hope we just added more layers and more backstory of characters into, into what we did. Hmm. I love the bebop design because like I was like, I want to hang out there. <laughs> like this is like cool. And but it's also like uh, like the color palettes and the, the schemes are so fun like the, the it's like a, a faded orange couch you have yeah. in like the living area but so how how big was that like set for the bebop like what what did you guys build from scratch it was, uh, it was huge actually it was um surprisingly large and um it was interesting as we were designing it uh you know our producer director and showrunner would come through and go can we make it like a couple of meters a couple of feet wider can we make it? And we were kind of looking at it going, like it's the size of a basketball court already. <laughs> Are you sure? And um, so it it was it got pretty large in the end. Uh, it would be, um, golly, it would be 90 or 100 feet long from one end of the set to the other. Uh, and it would be, oh, golly, it'd be like 40 feet, 35, 40 feet wide. So it's um, it's pretty big, and then that's just the upstairs layer where we where we see most of the story, and then we built a separate set on the same stage of uh, the bedroom, bathroom, corridors, other areas as well. Um, but it, you know, it was it was important to uh, to make it you know a, a good scale um, for far, you know it's fast turnaround, well reasonably fast turnaround television. It's not like we've got weeks and weeks to film these scenes. We've got pretty tough schedule. 
And so the fact was that the, you know, the camera and the crew and it could move around it pretty rapidly and pretty easily. It had a lot of wild walls, you know, to help that, but, you know, we often didn't need to move them. They could get through that uh, whole set pretty easily. Hmm. Yeah. So like all the corridors and the rooms were connected and it was, it was like it practical. Was, yeah. It really was very, very practical. Yeah. Oh, the, the show is so fun and it's like a mix of so many different genres and obviously that's what was part of the original as well but there's like action sci-fi like a space western and noir and uh yeah. and it also takes place in the future but a lot of the looks and like the props and decor are kind of contemporary or retro like there's like a vcr and like a late episode <laughs> so it's yeah. not like super advanced in the way you think of like futurism and it's also not a dystopian future so how yeah. do you go about designing that world and incorporating those like retro elements? I mean, again, they gave us such a great lead, you know, because we had that that sort of uh, source material to to work from. So, you know, in, in many episodes, I uh, you know, I, it looked very much like downtown Hong Kong. It looked like Wan Chai or uh, Kowloon, you know, so often in in scenes in the bebop world and on Tharsis. So, and I've worked there and know that city really well. So you immediately know uh, what it looks like in real and what it inspired them in Japan. Um, uh, the, the noir episode, you know, that, that obviously the original Bebop team had a real, a huge passion for movie making and movie makers. And so they were referring back to the, their favorite movies from the seventies, from the eighties, you know, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Midnight Cowboy, um, you know, all sorts of things they were referring back to. And, um, and so, and they're all things that we as filmmakers adore and love as well. So it's, um, it's pretty dreamy because uh, you can, we're homaging the original anime, which is homaging these amazing movies from such great periods that had a beautiful cars, um, you know, sort of long wandering, shots and wide angles and all sorts of really interesting things going on so we mine the same sources that they did and uh and hope that we find the same um feel that that they were going for so it, it was really lovely because each episode is often in a different color palette because it is purely a noir episode or it's really a um a cowboy episode so it was pretty lovely that episode by episode we had such diverse things to do and deal with yeah well in in the same vein like there's uh they go to different places in every episode because it's like they're chasing different bounties so you have a mm -hmm. different location every episode like different sets uh sometimes interior sometimes exterior so uh how exciting and also challenging was that for you uh, super ch challenging really uh i think we got up to about 130 130 sets and locations to do uh over the 10 episodes so it was uh heart stopping at times and uh it's the age-old saying of uh there's only one way to eat an elephant and you just had to just try and do what you know look you could look you'd look ahead but you really could really concentrate on what was coming up in the next month and just work your way through it and as you are just um treading water you can start looking at what's coming next month and just so we did, we did have a, a good prep period and uh, we did get to develop a lot of color palette and a lot of style of these different worlds. Um, right up front with, um, you know, I started this project with Grant Major, a fantastic New Zealand designer. And we were, uh, he started off designing and then I took over from him to do episode uh, three through to 10. And Grant and I have worked and known each other for many, many years. He's been really pivotal in, in um, my life and my career. And, um, and so it was really lovely to work with him, for him to hand off. He went to work on Jane Campion's Power of the Dog. And we were still six weeks out from shooting. So we hadn't even started shooting when Grant moved to another project. But we'd had this wonderful prep time together with a great bunch of concept artists, a great bunch of art directors. And it was one of those fortunate situations where we felt like we'd had some time to develop and not just um, run at it at a, at a crazy pace. Then it became a crazy pace, you know, 10 weeks out, you're going, oh my God, there's so much to build. Uh, and I guess the other misfortune fortune we had was John Cho having his, um, having his accident. So we went into a stand down period, which was like this sort of breather around, uh, we were sort of shooting episode three and four, and we just had this pause 
where we could actually consolidate the, and think about the rest of the series. And really, I had this luxury of designing, um, you know, uh, almost uh, solo a lot of the time and mm -hmm. just being able to really distill and talk through with um, the showrunners and the directors and distill. And that, yeah, it was un really unfortunate, but it was kind of fortunate at the same time. It gave it us like a blessing in disguise. It was a blessing in disguise. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the show hasn't officially been renewed for a second season. I mean, it hasn't premiered as we're talking about this, but uh, the, the the showrunners have talked about like their plans for season two. So would you be returning? And like, what kind of ideas do you have? Yeah, I certainly hope so. You'd have to, um, yeah, I'd love to do it again. It's been one of the most amazing projects I've been lucky enough to work on because of its diversity and its diversity of color and texture. And, you know, we made an effort to even bring in more cultures that you know the original anime had a lot of cultures and we've really made an effort to reference even more cultural diversity in the locations that we go to so um that is just it's like every episode is a different movie and uh, it's um it's a real delight and a real um i feel so fortunate so i'd be totally up for doing it all over again uh, there's there's so so much more space to explore yeah, that's right characters yeah. we haven't met yet from yeah uh, and look i'm lucky i'm you know i've been in the uk uh, i've just finished designing a film here in, Lo uh, in london and now i'm traveling around i've been lucky enough to pop over to france recently and i'll be going back there in a couple of weeks and i'm just my well of creativity is i just feel like the, it's just pouring in there i'm just seeing so much architecture and so much beauty and amazing uh, material that is all inspirational to me so i'm um you're ready um, for season I'm, two. I'm super ready, yeah. <laughs> Let me add it. <laughs> right. uh, well, Gary, it was great speaking with you. Thanks so much for your time. And we'll see you back in a little bit. Lovely. Thank you.